Hello everybody, happy Friday. It's time again for Facebook Live. I can't believe, I feel like it comes around super fast. I'm like, how did another week go by? Um, this week I decided to do one more fall themed Facebook Friday because you guys know I love fall and I just feel like we've rushed into Christmas too quickly. So this will be the last non-Christmas Facebook Friday for a while, um, but we're gonna use the scenic pumpkin patch stamp set. If you guys have seen this, it's an online exclusive, which just means you can't find it in a catalog. You can only find it online. Um, it's one of those landscape stamps where you can like stamp a scene. Um, and this time it's a pumpkin patch, which is really fun. So we're going to do that. We're going to create a scene and then we'll use, uh, for the other two projects, we'll use it a little simpler, um, where you can just make tags. All right. Okay. Before we get started, I want to remind you guys of a couple of things. Uh, the Splendid Autumn, if you're still looking for some ideas for the Splendid Autumn Suite, I have uh, the Splendid Autumn All-Star Video Tutorial Bundle available in my PDF store. Um, you can also earn this for free if you shop with me during October. I just sent an email this afternoon to those of you that have shopped with me, uh, including the PDF. Uh, the PDF has 12 projects, all using the, well, I can't show you very well this way, all using the Splendid Autumn suite of products and their videos. So uh, they have links and QR codes within the PDF. You can click, go watch the video, um, and then come back to the PDF for like measurements and supplies. Uh, so if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, next Friday is November 1st, and I don't even know, I haven't designed my project yet for November. I don't even know what it is. I can't remember. Stay tuned. If you go to the Splendid Autumn blog post, it'll tell you there. I just can't remember. My project, this, oh, I forget everything. My project this month is a little uh, pumpkin spice chai tea box with that gorgeous sentiment. I love that font. Don't you wish you could write like that? So beautiful. All right, so that is that. You get it for free if you shop with me and you spend over $50, or you can buy it in my PDF store for $15. Um, the third way to get it is to be on my team. Um, my downline get my PDFs for free, all of them. As soon as I publish a PDF, I go post it on our team website. Uh, so that is a perk of being on my team, which just leads me into reminding you, and I know it's backwards, reminding you that you have a week left to take advantage of this month's starter kit special. Um, for $99, you choose $155 of product of your choice. It can be anything, uh, annual catalog, fall catalog, online exclusives, clearance rack. You can even choose things from the demonstrator pre-order. Right now, demonstrators can pre-order a new slew of products coming out in November, a new um, group of online exclusives. So you can even shop that. Um, the kit is $99, free shipping. You just pay tax, obviously, on that if you have tax in your state. Um, and then you're part of Stampin' Up, you get a 20% discount on your purchases, or you make 20% from any products that you sell. Uh, you also get early access to catalogs. I always say that's my favorite perk. Um, you get to join my team, which again, my team gets free PDFs. They get discounted class kits. Um, we do team things long distance. I have local team here that we meet once a month, but I also have the majority of my team is spread around. Um, I'm seeing some weird words. Let me see. <laughs> oh, I can see. There's like little... Um, the font, there's like some directions from Facebook there and it's very light. It looks like it's being projected on the wall. I know you probably can't see it, but anyway, whew, that squirrel, squirrel moment. Anyhow, if you'd like to purchase the starter kit, there is a link at the top of my blog that says join. And if you go over there, the link is there for that, but also all the details, you know, the nuts and bolts. If you have questions, you can check it out over there. I realize I haven't even opened you guys up, so let me do that. All right, let me flip y'all around because I'm tired of looking at myself, honestly. Hopefully you guys have had a good week. Um, why can't I figure out how to turn it around today? There we go. 
Don't you love it, technology? I hear the whole country is in a heat wave. Is that true? Is it warm where you guys are? It's very warm here. It is summer, still summer here. Um, and we don't like it. And I bet if it's warm where you guys are, you don't like it either. All right, looks like I'm, let's see if I can get centered. Do you guys notice my new countertop? What do you think? It's a different color. Um, the white was just getting grungy and dirty. Like I could clean it, but it just still looked yucky. So I got a new countertop. Judy, 75 in Midland is odd, but awesome also. <sighs> sounds very nice. 57, that sounds cold to me, Joan. 55 in Washington, Susie, yes, that's cold. So not hot everywhere. Today show told me it was hot everywhere. They lied. <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, back to what we're doing today. Um, let me tell you a couple more things. There is a handful of kits left for my uh, retreat to go. Uh, it's the Reindeer Fun Christmas Retreat to go. Uh, it includes eight projects and a whole bunch of brand new product as well as a cute little bag. I think this year's retreat bag is the cutest bag I've ever, I've ever purchased for an event. It is the cutest. Um, and then there, of course, will be pillow gifts. I always have a special cookie made to match our stamp set. Um, those will ship right before Thanksgiving, so you'll have them in early December to work on. And uh, it's just, it's like a class to go, but like bigger and like over the top. Um, and it has what we call pillow gifts, because if you went to a retreat in person, we would put little pillow gifts on your bed each night, like a little surprise. Um, Stampin' Up! does that to us on our trips, so that's why they're called pillow gifts. So your pillow gifts will also be included in that box as well. So handful of, um, I think less than 10 at this point, spots or kits left for this. So if you would like to register for my reindeer fun, Christmas retreat to go. Uh, there is There are details on my blog. I've emailed out the link. I don't think I emailed it this week, but I did last week. Just email me and ask me for the registration link and I'll be happy to send it to you. All right, I've actually already started cutting and scoring for that. So it's gonna be good. Uh, Club Create for November is Winterly Treetops. You still have until November 7th to subscribe. Club Greed is my subscription kit designed by me. You get about $20 to $25 of product in your kit each month that you can use on other products, uh, projects. Project and product, those two words are too close together and I mix them up all the time. Anyhow, um, November's kit is non-Christmas because you won't get it till the end of November and I figured by that point, you're probably already like invested. You know what you're doing for your Christmas cards. So this is more like a gift set that you could give to somebody. Um, they could easy, easily be changed to Christmas sentiments if you want. Um, it is uh, available by subscription. And when you subscribe, you can cancel any time, you guys. I'm not going to force you to stay, you know. <laughs> but if you stay for six months, you get a... Um, product credit on your six month, which is a $25 product credit, about a stamp set or a couple of embellishments. Um, I send out a link to my Club Create members each month when it's their six month and they let me know exactly what they want sent in their six kit for the product credit. So it is uh, fun to stick around for six months. Okay, let me move that out of the way. Um, and I think that is it. Let me get a little sip of Diet Coke. Hold on just one second. All right. Oh, you know what? There was a paper hidden over here. Two papers I need to tell you about. Um, we have a kit sale going on to the end of the month, 30, up to 30% off, um, our kits. So if you like kits or if you're thinking of Christmas presents for friends and family, make sure you check them out. Um, when you go to the Stampin' Up! website, you click those, those uh, what does it say at the top? It's like three little lines or menu or whatever, and it'll drop down and you just click. Actually, it has a little icon now that says kits over there on the left side. So just they've made it even easier. So make sure you check those out up to 30% off, including the brand new kits they just released at the beginning of the month. 
Um, and then Paper Pumpkin for November is this cute little stocking um, kit, which looks like a lot of fun. All right, that is that, that's that. Let me see what else. Okay, I think that is it, you guys. Uh, let's look at prizes. Um, Nancy Clark, you are the winner of the Snowy Wonder Bundle from last week. Um, if you'll email me your mailing address, I will get it out to you in the mail. Thanks for sharing the video. Um, this week I've got the Friends for Life bundle from the annual catalog. So next week, actually next week there's not going to be a Facebook Friday. Um, my daughter ha has her first solo art show um, in Waco, so we'll be gone up there. And we're getting a new puppy next weekend. That's not why I'm canceling Facebook Friday, but <laughs> it's still exciting. Anyway, um, uh, next week, no Facebook Friday. But the following week, we will be doing Humble Home. You know, the little house with the little house punch. All right. So in two weeks, I will pick a winner um, for the Friends for Life bundle. All right. Let me put this down here. I Sometimes I stack them and I don't remember what... What was the prize? I have to go back and watch my own video, which is kind of embarrassing. All righty, let's see if we can get everything situated. I tore this and I don't like the way it looks torn, but I think we're just, oh, you guys can't really see the torn edge. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> it's hidden, perfect. Um, if you haven't joined me for Facebook Friday before, um, you guys, this is another schnauzer, of course, because you know, we like barking. <laughs> it's another schnauzer and it is actually Pepper's nephew is who we're getting. Pepper's sister had puppies and it's one of hers. So it's going to be a little family affair. He's brown and white and we're going to name him Tucker. He's going to be super cute. We can't wait. We're very excited. Um, I will share a picture when we get him. Um, okay. Over on my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, uh, you can get the PDF for today's projects. Um, it has measurements, supply lists, it also has the host code, and the host code will earn you the, the kit of today's projects for free. Um, this is what they look like. You will need the Scenic Pumpkin Patch stamp set. And you guys, I did something really stupid this week for these projects. I'm using two stamp sets that are not available anymore. I don't know what's wrong with, with me, but I, I knew that the little truck stamp set was gone. What I didn't know was the sentiment set throughout the year was gone. Um, I, don't, I don't know, was, I don't even remember, was that in the catalog, was it online exclusive? I don't know. Anyway, we'll get to that and I'll show you. But you'll need the stamps. My whole point of that is that I don't do any stamping for you. So you'll need the stamps. If you don't have the stamps, you can use other things, other um, stamp sets that you have. Um, or you could order it. And I will send this to you for free if you spend $35 or more online at stampinup.com with me by Monday at midnight. Here's the host code to use. If you don't use the host code, I just assume you don't want the projects. The only caveat to that is if your order is over $150, make sure to not use the host code because then you're going to get Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up. And um, I, whatever, okay, you guys... Have you ever done this? I actually accidentally took my medicine twice today and I swear my brain is like mush. Have you guys ever done that? I realized right after I swallowed it that I had already taken it. So now I'm like, oh, I feel very foggy and weird. So I apparently cannot speak and read your comments at the same time. Um, Chris, I'm glad you asked me about the retreat PDF because I forgot about it. Honestly, I forgot about it. I need to get that going. Thank you for reminding me. I'll work on that this weekend. It's typed. I just need to finish it and get it um, proofread. I don't know why I hadn't, I don't know why I, ha I forgot about that. Anyhow, thank you for reminding me. Back to what I was saying. Today's, today's going to be interesting, obviously, because I am a mushy brain today. Um, deadline is Friday. I mean, deadline is Monday at midnight. If you, um, what I was saying, if you spend $150, don't use the host code. You'll get Stampin' Rewards, and I'll still send you the kits, okay? Oh, Nancy, like, freaked me out, too. When I did it, I was like, oh, my God, am I going to die? <laughs> no. You just feel yucky. I did that once with um, Aleve, and, God, it made me feel terrible. 
Luckily, I don't feel like that, but I do just feel very mushy, you know, kind of like foggy and like I can't focus and I just want to close my eyes and lay down. But there's work to do, so we can't do that today. And my husband and I are going to go try and vote. Are you, do you guys have early voting where you live? I think everybody has early voting, don't they? Um, <laughs> Amory, you can't forget. Go, go take your meds. Um, we're gonna, my husband and I are gonna go try to vote today. We went by there the other day and the line was wrapped around the building and I was like, <laughs> I don't wanna stand in line that long. So hopefully today it'll be better. Okie dokie, let's get started. My first card, of course, is buried under all of the um, products that we're gonna use. So here's the card. This little truck, you guys, is so cute. And you know that the Trucking Along stamp set was an online exclusive. Um, I fell madly in love with it. We used it for Facebook Friday. Um, and then this week, I kind of knew the stamp set was gone, but I kind of didn't care because I really wanted to use it. If you ever do that, you're like, eh, I'll ask for forgiveness later. So that's what I did. But good news is the punch is still available. Um, if you don't have the punch, you can order the punch. And it just so happens that I have three trucking along stamp sets. I ordered them for prizes. I guess in the summer I never use them. So if you don't have the trucking along stamp set, I can help you out with that. Um, but also there's a, um, there's one I guess in French. <laughs> so if you really wanted the stamp set and you didn't care about the sentiment so much, um, all the other little things are there. The other option is to just punch out the um, truck and paper piece it with um, balmy blue, not balmy blue, boho blue. And then it'll be just as cute, okay? So we're gonna create this little scene. It looks like I need to zoom in a little bit. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. All right, so doesn't this resemble last week's card? Same color pattern or uh, color scheme, if you will. Um, I really love boho blue with like oranges. So. I did it again. I don't care. It's so cute. Um, the sentiment, uh, obviously we need sentiment stamps because this one doesn't have any sentiments. Um, it is the Simply Said. Very basic stamp set. Goes kind of, it's in the catalog along with our little, ephem I can't ever say that word, ephemeral packs, you know, the little punch out die cut. So it's a really good one to have. Okay, well I've chatted enough. Let's get started. We're going to first um, make our little scene. Okay. So we need some grid paper and I did have grid paper here, but I actually, I designed the cutest project to go with humble home yesterday. And I used that grid paper, wrote all the measurements on it. So hold, stand by while I get some new grid paper. Okay. We're going to start. You guys recognize the shape? Hold on. I just threw the paper across the room. Do you guys recognize the shape? It is from the garden meadows Garden Meadow Dyes, also an online exclusive. You know, we um, have a lot of online exclusives, a lot of them, and I've been using them like crazy. So make sure you look on the website, not just the catalog. Yeah, so I cut out a basic white piece with our little, like, I guess like a little doorway frame, and we're gonna use it also to cut out the frame of the boho blue piece. But let's make our little scene first. Hopefully I have all the things that I need starting with boho blue ink. Boho blue is one of our ink colors. I've got my blending brush and I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm gonna kind of go around the edge first, getting a lot of it on the grid paper. And then I'm just gonna kind of slightly go over like that. I probably went down too far, but that's okay because we can cover it up with the next crumb cake. And we're gonna do the same thing and I kind of like the edges to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna kind of go heavy there. And I am gonna take this up a little bit. Kind of blur the line so you don't know where the sky ends and the dirt begins. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks. One thing that I recommend, if you guys read my blog post yesterday, is to get your stamp set, get them all up on your blocks, and just play with it for a little while. Stamp some on um, grid paper, get a piece of white paper, just kind of practice, because you kind of have to get a feel for how they sit. 
Some of them are small, which if you're making a scene means they need to be further away. Some of them are bigger, which would mean they are closer. So you kind of have to play with that for the perspective of your images. And one thing that I found, especially with these little pumpkins, is that I stamped them upside down. They look like they should be one way, and I can't tell. So before you stamp them, see, I mean, they could go either way. So you really have to get the stems and stamp the stems and see which way is right. That way is right, and that way is wrong, see? So we have to make the, the one on the right end, I mean on the left end, be the one that goes up, like that, okay? Okay, so let's stamp. We're just gonna kind of, you know what? Hold on, stay there, stay right there. Let's do the trees first. That way we know where we're working. Cause I like to stop, start from either the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. And I think for this one, it's best to start at the top. So I'm gonna stamp my trees a couple of times in full strength and then stamp again so you have some lighter trees kind of in the back. All right, and you can stamp off on your grid paper too to add some more like that, okay? All right, now let's make sure I get my pumpkins right. Oh, we don't want brown pumpkins. And I'm just gonna kind of start stamping them. They look upside down to me. I, ha I really struggle knowing, making sure. That's why you really wanna test it out. Hopefully I picked it up correctly. All right, just, just random, kind of, you know, somewhere off the edge. And then we'll stamp the stems in pumpkin pie. Um, they are clear, the, the stamp is clear, so it helps line these up really easily. It's not difficult. All right, those go there, and we've got these two right there. Okay. And there is our little pumpkin patch scene. Easy peasy. But I will tell you, when I first started playing with a stamp set, if you saw yesterday's card, um, it took me a lot of time to really kind of figure out how they go. So play around with it. I threw away a lot of paper, honestly, before I got it right. Oh, I did want to do a, where's my crumb cake on the bottom. There's this little like line here too that you can use. It's like, I don't know, like dirt or whatever. Maybe it's the road, who knows? We'll call it the road since we're gonna put the truck on top of it. Okay, now we've got that, we'll set that aside. And we need a scrap piece of white for our truck. And we're gonna stamp the outline first. And then we'll stamp the wheels. Yes, I know, if you weren't here, if you just joined me, I know the stamp set is gone. I'm breaking the rules and using something that is retired. Dun, dun, dun. You guys, we had to take my daughter to the uh, cardiologist this week. She's been having some like racing heart, pounding heart kind of situation issues. And I was really nervous about it. But luckily, everything was fine. So she, she, they did all the testing, and after the doctor left the room, she looked at me and she said, so it's all in my head? <laughs> I said, no, it's not all in your head. Something's going on. We think maybe her medication may be doing it, but scary moments at the cardiologist. Who would ever think you have to take your, your teenager to the cardiologist? All right, now I stamped the truck. Not very good, but we're going to pretend like it's pretty good. In boho blue, um, I stamped the little farm fresh saying there on the side in memento black. Um, Mary, Mary Jo, so that's another thing. It's interesting that you said that because I actually was doing some research on that this week. Um, and so um, she, they sent her home with um, a heart monitor to wear for five days. And then, um, you know, they'll get the data and let us know. I'm going to call her pediatrician and because we're not just gonna let it go. You know, you don't wanna just, you don't wanna mess around with that. The thing I was worried about the most, honestly, is um, 
something that was going to cause her to have to play basketball. Um, she was really worried about that too, because you know, you hear about these things, um, and that's very scary. But he said, he said, she's fine. So we'll see. Um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to keep pursuing it. I really think it's her medicine. It's not a new medicine that she's been taking for years. Um, but she's teenager now so maybe oh I forgot to do something so maybe you know hormones and stuff change I'm not gonna let it go um you know what Mary I did ask her if it could be anxiety um and I don't think so because it happens weird at weird times like like she took a bath and when she stood up to get out of the bath her heart like went crazy. So just, you know, like times when, I mean, I guess it could still be anxiety, but I, she's not really a, too much of an anxious person. My middle child, yes. Okay. And I have ink on my thumb, darn it. All right. Pretend like there's, well, it doesn't matter because you're not going to see it, but I, I stamped the little boards that go in the back of the truck and I left some white like this so that I could just put glue down there and then we take the truck and lay it over so then it just looks like it's coming up from the back of the truck okay like that you guys are giving me awesome details and i have to come and look uh Miriam, we did talk about afib we he he they did an ultrasound they did a um what's the main heart you know uh, i can't even think of the name the main heart test standing, sitting, all of it. And it all came back normal. So that's why you sent her with the monitor to see if, um, you know, if maybe something else shows up. I don't know, it's very weird. And it's, it's a little scary, basketball has begun. And you know, I don't know. Okay, boho blue, four by five and a fourth. I'm gonna cut again that little garden meadow thing, window, whatever you wanna call it. Um, yes, Rita, I have gone down that hole too, that rabbit hole. It's top of mind, top of mind. Yeah, that was, honestly, that was my first, that was my first, um, concern. Oh, darn it. You guys are very distracted. You know, I've got mushy brain today and now I'm talking about things and can't focus on what I'm doing. Okay. We've got, to, <laughs> we've got to emboss this guy again, the forever plaid embossing folder, maybe one of my favorite embossing folders of all time. A fib. Oh, that's scary. So Irene, how did she figure out she had it? AFib is an irregular heartbeat, right? Her, you know, funny enough, she wears an uh, Apple watch and the watch tracks her heartbeat. And it's never, you know, sometimes people will say, I, I didn't know anything was wrong until my heart, until my watch started saying something was wrong. And, uh, that hadn't happened to her until she got back to school yesterday after the doctor's appointment. Her, she said her heart was racing and her watch said something about it. So I'm like, this is, this is weird. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, again, medication. If you Google this, one of the very first things every website you read suggests is medication. So really that's probably... The easiest thing to cut out and to see and that's where we're gonna go starting tomorrow she didn't want to give it up today but we're gonna go tomorrow um this is a different pattern than what I used over here but it's from the same pack of paper I think yeah country lace okay and I cut it to fit the size of my um, card front so you can't see the card front um, and we're gonna put our frame on with dimensionals. 
yeah, I the watch was really good because it it really could give some strong data, you know. It was able to she sent me a picture of her watch from school and it showed like little like a little plot, you know, um graph with it. So it is really good. And I had also cuz I was worried it wasn't accurate, so I bought her a little what do you call the little pulse ox thing that you put on your finger? And it, believe it or not, the watch was like very accurate, which was interesting. All right, we're gonna put this here. Ah, make sure you get it centered because the plaid line will look wonky if it's not. All right, and then let's get our little seam. And why do I keep putting these dimensionals over here? And we will put that. Oh my gosh, Patty Joe! yikes. My father has that too. It, it feels like not something a teenager would get, but you just never know, I guess. Um, for the banner, I didn't mention, this is the Hearts and Hugs banner. I think I've been using this banner like every week. It's long enough to fit a lot of sentiment, so I've been using it a lot. And then we'll put our little truck on top like this how cute and then i've been using this um you know the colored linen thread oh did i put a dimensional there now i can't run it through there let's see we can fix that um i've been using the copper clay color a lot and not the navy or the green so i was like okay we need to use up those colors too We'll use the green when Christmas comes around, I'm sure, but the navy looks good here too. Is it navy or Misty Moonlight? I think it's navy. Thanks, I'm glad you guys like this card. I That's why I was like, I know I shouldn't be using a stamp set that they can't order, but it's just too cute not to use it. So remember, I have three of those trucking along stamp sets, brand new, that I bought for prizes that I'd be happy to send if someone missed out on the trucking along stamp set. Um, and the punch, of course, is still available online, so you can order that. All right, that's it. That's an easy card, right? Oh, you know what? I forgot to do the inside pieces. See what I did on the inside? Just a piece of white, a strip of the designer series paper, and then I stamped some of the pumpkins. Um, I didn't cut those pieces today, so make sure you do that, because that's cute, too. I've been trying to fancy up all the the insides of my cards. Thanks guys. I'm gonna come back and read all the stuff you guys are telling me. Um, oh gosh, oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, so yes, I'm gonna come back and read all of that because I want to, I want to know all of it. But I can't focus. <laughs> I'm gonna make big time mistakes if I continue to read all the comments. Okay, yeah. I'm super thirsty today. Why is my Diet Coke not working? Alrighty. Now, throughout the year is the sentiment set that I'm using on this project. And when I went to type up the supply list last night, it wasn't on the, it wasn't available. Did this retire? Was this in last year's catalog? Um, was this, an online exclusive? I can't even remember. Again, remember I have an excuse today at least. Okay, but I mean, you guys, just use any sentiment you want here. Any sentiment. Really, the fun part of this card is the leaves, are the leaves that we're going to make. Look how pretty they are. And we are going to watercolor. And this is messy watercoloring, so don't get nervous. If you think you can't watercolor, anybody can do this. All right, so let me, uh, once again, get some grid paper. And we're gonna use a whole piece of watercolor paper. And I have, I have, you're gonna laugh. I didn't wanna clean my blocks and then get them dirty again <laughs> after I made this card. So I just left them dirty, okay? You guys, you know. I mean, that's ink. I didn't want to waste the ink that's on there. Okay, so you're going to, the first thing you're going to do is get a piece of watercolor paper. And I have taped it to a, um, just like a piece of chipboard. 
so that it won't curl up because I'm gonna use a lot of water. And then I'm gonna take my um, blocks and ink up pumpkin pie and Cajun craze and I'm already getting dirty and crushed curry, okay? And then I have a little dish of water over here that is really full. I don't know why I filled it so full. And my water painter. And the first thing I like to do is just kind of prime my paper, get it nice and wet. And then we're just gonna drop colors, all right? And I started with pumpkin pie on one side and you can brush, you can just drop like this. We want there to be lots of variation in color. So just, you know, just get crazy. Go crazy. You dip your water in, you want it to blend. The thing about this is once it's dry, you want to do it again right on top. And it's gonna give you layers upon layers upon layers of color. Um, obviously, for the sake of Facebook Live, we're just gonna do one layer, but I have one that's done so I can show you. Um, the thing that I really like about watercoloring is it leaves um, like a little edge where the water has dried, and I like that texture. The other thing is when it dries, you've added water to it, so the color has kind of washed out a little bit. But as it dries, and when you put another layer on it, that color is gonna intensify, all right? Just, I mean, I could do this all day. I'm gonna drop, drip water on it, set, pick water up and put it down, just, you know, play okay just play 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 until you've covered it and then set it aside to dry i don't know the thing is if you use your heat tool to dry it you're not going to get those water edges which is fine but if you have the time let it sit and dry normally and you'll get these like water lines so here's mine i probably did three layers of just puddles of color and you can see this is what i'm talking about these like edges right these water edges the last thing you want to do once it's dry is get your cajun craze and just kind of add some drops okay like that all right now we'll set that aside, give that a few minutes to dry while we work on the other stuff. Let's hope I don't spill that. And these guys finally are gonna get the bath that they have been waiting for all week. Move them over here. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and let's do some of the other parts of our card. Um, I have cut out a basic white stylus shape circle which is the second largest, not the largest, the second largest. And we're gonna do some masking. Oh, you're gonna need a post-it note for this, okay? Stamp, we're using the medium pumpkins this time. Stamp your pumpkins on a post-it note and then just cut around the top, okay? You're gonna need to do that. And let's find our pumpkins. And we're going to stamp them right here like that. And then we'll get the, did I put it away? No, it's right here, pecan pie. And we're going to stamp the stems. Then we're going to take our, our little mask. And we're going to put that over that like that. I'm not worried about the stems because they're darker than the color that we're getting ready to stamp. And we're gonna take that fence and stamp it like that, okay? And then when you remove your mask, it, it leaves the pumpkins uninked up with the fence and it looks like they're sitting in front of the fence. That's called masking. And it's very easy and it you can 
achieve this goal also by fussy cutting, which we'll do on the next project, but I'm always trying to find ways for us not to fussy cut. So that is that. Let me get rid of this dirty paper. And I have cut out a tag. This is my new favorite die. I've been using it a lot. It's from the Marius Trees dies. It's a tag. And I've cut it from the Country Woods Designer Series paper. And we're going to take our little circle and just put it right there. And then I stamped the sentiment in Versamark on Early Espresso, heat embossed it with white embossing powder, and cut it out with a stylish shape banner. All right, so there's that. Now, did you guys notice my bow? My good friend, Kay Cogbill, sent me a text a couple of weeks ago saying, hey, look what I did to my ribbon. Um, she needed some red ribbon and she didn't have it. So she pulled out the uh, basic beige ribbon and just added a red line to it. And so I was like, oh my gosh, Kay, super cute. And it looks kind of, kind of country, if you will. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna kind of make a country ribbon. So this is a little bit tedious. So, well, I mean, not tedious, but you know, it takes a little bit of time and you don't want to have to do more than what you're already doing. So tie your bow and then cut it. Give yourself a little extra just in case. So you know exactly how, you know, how much ribbon you're gonna to need to do this to. Then take your pumpkin pie and you'll see I am not, my ink on the edge is not straight. It's gonna be thicker in some places. And you know what, if I had tried this on my own, I would have given up after doing one side and thought, nope, can't do it. It'll look bad. But what I found is that it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Once you tie the bow, it's so cute that you really don't see any imperfections. All right, so Kay, thank you for this little, see right there, I just got real thick right there. Thank you for this fun ribbon technique that I would never have thought of on my own. Okay, so we got that. See how it's just, I mean, it's definitely not perfect. And that's okay. When you go around, push this in, make sure that you have the side that you colored on the outside. Kay is awesome. She is one of my oldest Stampin' Up! buddies. And, and uh, you know, she's one of my text buddies. You know, you have that friend that you just text and something happens, or you're like, look at this, this is dumb, or oh my gosh, how cute is this? She's, she's one of my buddies. Um, thanks, Mary, I'm glad you like it. Um, okay, I try to come up with techniques, not just regular old cards, sometimes regular cards. But sometimes we have a little, little more, a little something, something. Okay, so there's our tag. Now let's go back. Hey, my hands. Yee. Let's see if I can clean them with my chamois, or if that's gonna make it worse. I just washed my chamois, so it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. <laughs> yes, I just wiped my hands on my shorts because that's how I roll. All right. Is this dry? I think it's dry enough. So we're gonna take this off and bring our cut and emboss machine. I am using the autumn leaves dies that are from the annual catalog. Where are the online exclusives? I believe they're annual. They're, they're not the brand new ones that we just had come out. They've been around for a while. So I'm gonna cut as many as many leaves as I can out of here because we're actually going to use them. After you do all that work, you wanna use every scrap of this paper. We're gonna use some of them on the next project as well. All right, so we'll run this through like this. And we're gonna do something else with the dies on the bigger leaves. But, ooh, look, that one looks so good. Once you like um, 
cut them out and they're away from the paper, it's like, oh, look. You know how the leaves, they start to kind of get crispy on the edges in the fall? And they get, they get the little burnt spots. Or maybe that's just here where they're fried. I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's see how many we can fit. Uh-oh, there's this one. Ooh, that's a good one too, see? So you want to kind of like try to like straddle the colors so that you're getting some variety. Let's see. I also have this one over here. Um, let's do these. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go. For the sake of the video, I'm just gonna stop there. I could probably run it through one more time, squeezing a few more in. But we don't wanna be here all day watching me die cut. All right, let's get these out. Do, 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 we need the Jeopardy music. All right, now, oh, we still got a straggler over here. There are some other dies in here for these two guys. And they look like this. Now they will actually cut out the veins, I guess is what they are. But I'm gonna leave them together when I adhere them. Okay. All right, we've got that carefully. Yes, half leaves, exactly, Nancy, yeah. You could really get some more, I definitely could get some more use out of that piece. All right, so see how it cuts them? But I'm gonna leave them just intact, okay? And let's see if we can get this one off and leave stuck in there. Now, one more thing, this die set has this die right here, and you may be like, what the heck is that? Well, it's just gonna add some stitching to our card front. So I'm gonna do, oh, I need to get some new plates. My plates are starting to cause me problems. <laughs> I actually broke a plate in half recently, and I have, oh my gosh, okay, post-it tape it is. And I've never, it ran through the machine and it made a loud pop. You know, they pop when you run it through. But this one made a loud pop and it popped, it was broken in half. I've never used a plate completely where I couldn't, where I couldn't use it anymore, but that one was out. So can you guys see, it's kind of like stitching lines. All right, put that one down towards the bottom. I'm leaving little smudges of pumpkin pie ink on everything. <laughs> oh my goodness, I should take the time to go wash my hands, but I'm not going to. All right, here is our dirty card base. My goodness, those plates are going in the trash as soon as we are done. Dirty plates, dirty hands, everything is dirty, but we're gonna cover it up so it's not to worry. All right, let's do dimensionals. I'm gonna put the dimensionals just right in the middle because we're gonna tuck those leaves in behind there. All right, so put that there. Make sure that this isn't sticking off the edge of the card because then your card won't fit in the envelope. And I'm gonna take my big one and just slide it back like that. I don't want it to be hidden, but it also has to fit. And then we'll take this one and let's do this one kind of like that and then let's take two little ones and put them which one do I like the best let's do this one come on come on glue ah, like that okay but wait there's more how about some faux glass dots now one card I used the Cajun Craze ones and one card I used Pumpkin Pie. So it just depends 
I feel like I have more Cajun craze leaves, so I think I'll use Cajun craze. You really could use both. I'll put one like right there and one up there. Okay, but wait, there's still more. Let's do something to the inside. Let's get some cake and let's use the back of our cards or Facebook Friday paper and now things are falling out. No, don't fall out, stay. Okay, get your fence and go across like that. And then remember, we've got leaves left. We've got to save, let's save three for our next project. But then we can put some leaves down here, kind of going along the edge of the fence, like a pile of leaves. And then you get to really showcase your beautiful watercoloring. There we go. All right, and there you go, more birthday cards, because I need birthday cards. I told you guys last week I need birthday cards, so there you go. Let me show you my original. No, that's not my original. Here's my original. I used four leaves. I think four leaves look better over the fence. So pretty. All right, there you go, you guys. Easy, messy watercoloring that turns your leaves into beautiful, beautiful, vibrant leaves. All right, let me clean up my mess and we will do one more project. Of course, I have a treat box for you today. Of course, of course. Okay. Thanks for sharing, Carol. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I, I just want to do watercolor washes like that all the time. It's really fun. All right, so you gotta save some leaves for your next project. And our next project is a pretty easy box for these pumpkin spice fig bars. I haven't tried them, but I know that they're pretty popular. And I love fig bars, so we're gonna make a little bit of a healthier fall snack, if you will. And see the leaves, how I have them tucked in. I'm also using everybody's favorite, More Than Autumn, for the sentiment. Okay. All right. So let me get, I, uh, <laughs> there's individual recordings of each of these projects over on YouTube. Once again, this week's was like mess up after mess up after mess up. I don't know what my problem was today, but... Hopefully it's edited correctly. That's the thing about when you do a recorded video, you can edit it. All right, to make the box, you're gonna start with a piece of pumpkin pie. That is six and a fourth by seven and a fourth. Score the long side at three fourths. Three and a fourth, four and six and a half. I'm gonna make them sure, okay, yeah. And then the short side at three fourths, three four. My mouth is so dry, I can't even say it. Three fourths <laughs> and five and a half. Oh, maybe that double dose of medicine is making my mouth super dry today. Okay, bone folder. Let's burnish those lines. You guys have plans for Halloween. The next time I see you, it will be November. Um, we, I'm gonna hand out candy. I told you guys last year, I put the candy out on the porch and about 30 minutes later, the little boy rang the doorbell and I said, and he said, trick or treat. And I said, oh, there's candy. He said, no, all the big kids took it. And I was like, oh, okay. I need to sit out here and hand it out next year so that the little boy doesn't get mad at me. <laughs> I'll never forget the way he said it. All oh, the big kids took it. I mean, he was really mad. All right, on one side, you're gonna cut off that, that square piece, okay? And I'm just being lazy. 
Yes. <laughs> Nancy, a few glasses of water is exactly what I need. Exactly what I need. I have drank a lot of drink, drunken drink. I've had a lot of water today. I don't know why my mouth is so dry. Okay. So you're going to just snip those lines like that. You've cut these off and made this at an angle. And we will get our tear and tape. And peel that off like that. And then we're going to line those edges up. They should be exactly the same sides like that. And then fold in the bottom. The um, side where the two pieces met, I make that the back side. All right, so the sides, the back, and then the front. Yeah, Mary, I know. And you know what? I love Halloween, and I am always lazy. I don't know why I do that. But it's usually gone way faster than it should be. So now I know. It's all the big kids taking it. So I got I to gotta change it up. Make my husband sit outside with me. Make Pepper sit outside with me and she'll bark at all the kids. <laughs> she'll bark at all the kids. Okay, this paper. Let's talk about this paper. Nature Sweetness. This was in the spring mini catalog and they carried it over. And it's super beautiful. It has um, those gold flecks in it, which I thought was kind of, you know, for this time of year, it's good to have some gold flecks. And all the leaves are changing and they're all beautiful. All right, we're leaving the top open and we're just gonna uh, use some peach pie ribbon. And we're gonna tight close at the top. Oh, Mary, that's sad. You know, in my neighborhood, I didn't think we would have very many because our neighbor doesn't have sidewalks. It's very dark. Um, and the lots are big, so the houses are spaced out, but we had a lot. And, oh, and we have, our community is older. We don't have a lot of children in the neighborhood. A lot of people who live here have lived here for like 20 years, 25 years, something like that. But I was wrong. Okay. You just never know. My mom lives in a really busy neighborhood and she said one year she didn't have very many. So I guess you just never know. At least you can eat all your candy that you buy yourself. All right, so let's look at the tag. We're gonna do several stamps. And so I'm gonna start at the bottom because if I don't, I'm worried I'm not gonna have enough room for my words. So I'm gonna start with the words at the bottom and we'll put spice kind of in the middle pumpkin right above it and pumpkin pie and then this calls for and well, I need to leave that open this calls for in pecan pie okay and then we're going to stamp that fence again which I think I put over here where did I put it uh, we need crumb cake Let's see, I'm just gonna ink up part of it so I don't have to use. Uh, let's see, there we go. All right, put that there. Now you could do the masking thing here, but I found that these larger pumpkins, they have this weird rounded bottom, which would look fine if you're doing like a seam, but for this, they needed to be flat. And so I'm gonna cut them, off, cut them out and then cut them off at the bottom so that they look like they're sitting flat, okay? Um, now, do I have paper snips? I do. Wow, Mary, that's a long time. Yes, you know, that's true, I hadn't thought about that. A lot of churches do like trunk or treat, and that's probably the safest bet. So yeah, you're probably right. You know, when I was a kid, we stopped trick or treating about I don't know, maybe sixth grade, but around here, my my girls are still trick like we're going trick or treating. I'm like wow, I, I guess they do that. You know, I mean, I, I don't want to be mean and be like, no, you can't go because all their friends are going. 
But when I remember, you know, as a teenager, we would sit outside and hand out candy. But now they're like, we want candy. Like, okay. All right. Now, see how they just, I don't know, I felt like, I mean, I guess it would be okay if you left them like that. But I'm just going to cut them off so they have a flat bottom. And... Oh, tonight, Anna Margaret, that's fun. I have done trunk or treat before and it really is fun. I've taken the kids to it and I've like done it, you know, like out of the back of the car, which both, both is really fun. Um, the kids elementary school always did a really big trunk or treat and it was really fun. All right, uh, perennial postage rectangle. We're gonna put that there and then you've got those beautiful leaves. There's my mom. Your neighborhood had, wasn't it, the, was it the first year you didn't have very many trick-or-treaters or was it last year? I can't remember because I kept thinking that's weird. You should have a lot of trick-or-treaters out there because actually that's where Addie's going to trick-or-treat with her little friend that lives in your neighborhood. All right, tuck these in like this. Oh, the high school has trunk-or-treat. I have seen those Harry Potter. Candy bars, they're so cute. Yes, remember last year when we had the owl stamp? They go so good with that. You had two the first year, and then since then you've had a lot, right, Mom? Is that what it is? Okay, you guys, there's your box. Easy peasy. And you can use your beautiful leftover watercolored leaves. All right, I have two. No, actually, I have three bonus cards for you. Yesterday's was this one, All right? And that does have a lot of fussy cutting on it. Same thing on the inside. This one we uh, shared when we did the flower cart stamp set. Okay. And then this one Chris sent me. Yep, Chris, beautiful. Chris always sends me gorgeous cards. I'm gonna put this one on my blog on Monday, okay, Chris? So pretty. I like how you did the paper here on the side. I would not have thought of that, but that's perfect. Very pretty. All right, well, that's it, you guys. If you like today's projects and you would like for me to send them to you in a little kit for you to make, just make sure you get your online orders in by Monday midnight. You can order anything that you want. I don't care, you can order whatever, um, just as long as it's over $35 before tax and shipping and you use that host code. Let's see if I can zoom out now. So you can see the host code. The host code is also on today's PDF and on today's blog post. All right, you guys, thanks for sticking with me today. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go lay down, wait for this medicine to wear off. Um, remember, no Facebook Friday next week. I'll be back on November, what is it, November, I have a calendar right here, November 8th. Oh, my mom's birthday. I'll be back on November 8th um, for Facebook Friday, all right? And we'll be doing Humble Home, and then after that, probably those that tree set that one of you asked me about next last week, and I can't remember the name of it. Mary, no, it's not Mary's Trees, it's the new tree set. All right, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Happy Halloween, and I'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. Bye.